Hi everyone and welcome to Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Today I will be talking about my new cowl that I designed and knit uh, from Scandinavian Motifs. Woo! So that's the outside, that's the inside. It's a tall cowl based on the Radiant Star Cowl by Ella Gordon. Well, based, inspired by. Um, this is a little off center, sorry. I should have brought my Radiant Star Cowl with me. It's somewhere else. Um, I'll, I'll get it for the, for the second half of the video. Um, so the Radiant Star Cowl is a tall cowl. It goes up, like up here on your neck. It is shaped like a funnel. Funnel, sorry. Um, so the outside is wider and the inside is narrower. And then the Radiant Star Cowl, the same pattern goes all the way through, but I wanted to make the inside of mine different. That's why it's different, but you can see the funnel shape. So this is the outside, it's wider and it's a little bit bigger. It's like, it's a little longer. And then that's the inside, it is narrower. So to achieve this, um, I just changed needle sizes. Um, I didn't want to decrease it all because the way that this is going to be grafted, I'm going to do a three needle bind off. You could alternately kitchen or stitch it, but I prefer to do a three needle bind off because you're not going to be seeing the edge. It'll be on the inside of the cowl. So you'll get the ridge from the three needle bind off, but it won't matter because it'll be on the inside. So um, you need the same number of stitches on each end when you're going to graft it together. So that's why I did, um, I didn't decrease. I just, I just um, went down a needle size. So before I sew it together, which I am gonna do, I'm not sewing it, um, I'm uh, grafting it with a three needle bind off. Before I do that, which I am gonna do at least part of um, in this video, I am going to talk about the design process a little bit because I, I did design it. Um, and before I go too far, I'll tell you what I'm wearing. This is the Autumn Morning Cardigan. I don't actually know who it's by. I literally just looked it up on Ravelry because I didn't make this. Uh, my like best friend, Monica, she's the best. She made this for me. This is the first time since I was really, really little that anyone's knit me a sweater. Um, and I've made Monica a sweater too. <laughs> so uh, hers is a color work sweater that um, it's like dark green and it has a white and purple yoke. It's really cute. looks great on her. Um, she made this in Woolstock Worsted by Blue Sky Fibers in color blue ice, snow ice. It's like a light blue. It's beautiful. I remember when she got the yarn and I was so jealous and then she made it into a sweater for me because she's really nice. Um, I love Monica. I really, really miss her. She moved to Texas. We used to live in Philadelphia, like near each other. <laughs> and, um, and we were both like really sad and lonely because we lived by ourselves and we became friends and we knit together all the time. So I miss that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna talk about my cowl, right? Hold it up again so you can see this. So again, this was inspired, the shape was inspired by the Radiant Star Cowl from the Shetland Wool Week Annual 2020 um, with the funnel shape and the tall, tallness of it. Um, but I wanted to do my own motifs because um, that's sort of what Fair Isle Knitting is all about. It's about taking shapes that you trust and are comfortable with, like shapes, um, for instance, a sweater, a cowl, a hat, things you're familiar with, and then putting your own motifs in. Because in the olden days, they didn't have patterns like we do. They just had uh, their graph books and they figured out new patterns all the time. And anyway, um, so this is not, uh, these motifs are not from Fair Isle. The outside one is, sorry, there's some needles there. I'm gonna put this on needles and graft it. So the outside one is Swedish and the inside one is Faroese. And that means it's from the Faroe Islands, which is an archipelago in the North Sea, even farther away from the mainland of anything than Shetland. It's halfway between Iceland and Norway and they're I don't know if you say it's owned by Denmark, but it's like under Danish, I don't know, not rule, but you know, it's part of Denmark, I think legally. So that's, that's cool. But I think they have their own dialect. They might even have their own language. Um, I've never been there. My mom's hairdresser went to the Pharaohs, apparently. She's very cool. So she used to be my hairdresser too, but I don't live in Vermont anymore. Um, 
I, I don't know anyone else who's ever been there. <laughs> but anyway, I took this book to design it, Sheila McGregor's Traditional Scandinavian Knitting. Uh, if you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I really love Sheila McGregor's um, complete book of traditional Fair Isle knitting because it has amazing charts. This is no different. She's got amazing charts in this. I've actually talked about this book before, um, but I've never shown it. So she gives you Swedish patterns, Norwegian patterns, like again, lots of charts, gorgeous all over charts. There's lots of bands. Um, there's lots of like smaller charts. See, she has stuff like this. Um, this would be like a set of patterns you might put in a kofta or a traditional Norwegian sweater with like a navy sweater with the patterning up top. Maybe that's called something else. I don't know. Um, there's pictures. There's a, she says that Scandinavian stocking pattern. I think this is a Faroese motif. Faroese motifs have a lot of, um, color blocking like that. And they're so cool. Like, they're just so interesting. So I really, really like the Faroese patterns. Uh, let's see, I think there's a section in here, like Faroe and Iceland. And that's where the patterns are. Yeah, it's this. There's also a great book called Faroe Island Knits or Knitting. I have that. It's really good. Yeah, this is it. So they've got, they've got really interesting charts from Faroe. Some of them are interesting shapes. They have like a little cat's head shape. It looks like a cat or a fox. They have this hourglass. That one's very recognizable. And then they have a lot of these interlocking patterns like this one. Um, or smaller, they're kind of like seating patterns. Like these seating. Um, just like for filling in places where there aren't really big patterns. And I have on the docket, like I'm trying to design a big Faroese jacket and by big, I mean, it has a lot of patterning on it, like with a really big panel motif going down the back um, and then the classic dragonflies going down the front uh, lapels here and then with seating all over the rest of the body and probably a different seating pattern on the sleeves. So someday I'm gonna make that. <laughs> um, just, I've got a lot to get through first. I have a lot of yarn already. I don't need to get any more. Okay, so I marked all the pages well, when I was going through this, I marked the ones that I liked and then I counted up the stitches in them. Okay, so here's one. So this is the outside. And again, it's Swedish according to the book. It's got the little arrows with the smaller flowers and then the larger flowers. And they're kind of, so that's what it looks like when it's knit up. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I just have it on the page for the... Yeah, there it is. Take the sticky note out. There, it's extra sticky so I don't get left an orange thing. So that's, no, that's not it. That's not the right one. Sorry, I liked that one, but that's not the one I used. Um, where's the one I used? Maybe it's here. No, it's none of the ones that I marked. Anyway, it's in here. It's a Faroese pattern and it's definitely in this book somewhere. Uh, okay, so the way that I designed it was that I took the outline of the radiant star cowl which had 168 stitches around and I thought okay I have to get close to that so that it fits properly I'm gonna knit it exactly the same way I'm gonna use the size 3 needle for the outside I'm gonna use the size 2 needle for the inside I'm gonna graft it together with a 3 needle bind off I'm gonna try and do the same or very similar number of rounds per outside and inside um, and see what happens um, so I've this pattern the outside one uh, had 34 stitches around or as a horizontal repeat. So if you multiply that by five, you get 170. Is it just five, right? Yeah, I think it's five times. I don't have a calculator on me. I mean, I have one on my phone, but I'm using it to record. So I'm gonna, yeah, it must be five. Anyway, um, so 170. So I needed to have a pattern for the inside that went into 170 so I found a pattern that had uh, a 10 stitch repeat because 10 goes into 170, obviously. Um, and that was great. Um, so that's why I didn't use any of the patterns that I marked because none of them were 10 stitch um, horizontal repeats or 17 or 34. So when I've left a very long string so I can 
end here so I can um, craft them together. Wow, that's really springy. I blocked this already. Some the When I did the Radiant Star Cowl, I blocked it afterwards. So that's when it's folded in half. That's what it's going to look like. I'm going to measure it um, flat when I change the perspective so you can see how long it is and how wide it is. Um, but before that, I'll talk a little bit about the yarn. So I used Jameson & Smith Supreme Jumper Weight in uh, 2009, which is Euclid. This took under 100 grams. It was like... 75 grams of the brown and this is shade 2006 cat mul no gamel good gamel good it's like a light brown when I, <clears throat> when I sent a picture of this to my mom or I think when I showed her on FaceTime she thought it was like blue she was like oh it's blue no it's brown I think it was just the lighting so hopefully you can tell here it's brown and brown <laughs> oatmeal and kind of a grayish Grayish brown. There we go. That's better. If it's right in the light, it's not as it's not as good. I should move the light out of the frame so you're not staring at it. Oh, this isn't really working. Okay. Well, let's try that. It's gonna be pointed down when I show the sewing up anyway. Um, is there anything else I want to talk about before I graft it? I'm trying to think. I don't think so. I am writing the pattern like writing the pattern like putting it into like a nice um pdf that is nice and nice is the clearly the only word i know today um i used like canva to design an actual pattern that's not just a word document that's what i'm trying to say hopefully it comes out well if you want it now i'll send you the charts um but yeah it'll i'll probably just put it on ravelry for free i'm not an established designer yet so happy to put it up there for free if you want to knit this um, I think that's all for now. I'm going to change the perspective now and show you uh, how to graft this together. All right, time for grafting. And before I graft, I'm going to just lay this out flat. Oops, I had to unpick my provisional cast on. So there's some pieces of like random purple yarn in here. And I'm going to measure this for you. So we've got... Um, here to here is about 10, almost 10 and a half inches for the inside part and the outside we've got about 11 and a half. So because the inside is a little uh, shorter, it's also a tighter gauge, um, that means that the inside will be completely tucked in when you fold it in half and the outside will curl around a little bit so you won't be able to see the grafted edge at all which is useful because um, it's going to be a ridge so you can see i've got size two needle here i've got these stoppers um in case you've never heard of these cocoa knits i'm not sure which way this is i guess it's going to go sideways yeah so these are cocoa knits colorful stitch stoppers these are wonderful really, really useful stitch stoppers. I've got a size three needle here. I have one that provis from the provisional cast on that got lost. So that's on hold there so that I can pick it up when it's time. Um, now I have to, I should have gotten my needles out earlier. I have to get a, another needle to knit these together. Okay, I got a 16 inch three. This is my needle bag. It's got Eeyore on it. I like Eeyore. My friend Monica, who's ma uh, made my sweater, uh, her mom made me this bag. She has an embroidery machine which is like super cool. And it's just like a bag where I keep my needles. Um, and it's really awesome. Okay, here we go. So fold it in half. I'm gonna bring the inside up through here. There you go. Now you can kind of see what it's gonna look like. Whoops, the, this has gotta come with me. Okay, so I'm going to do a three needle bind off. So here's my third needle right there. I'm going to take off the front stoppers. I'm going to leave the back stoppers on because I do not want anything falling out. I'm going to put this, this is my notions bag. This is a little Hohe & Co EPA pouch. It's got everything. There's some ribbon that I've never used for a, um, the inside of a steak. Uh, you know, lots of things in here. Tape measures, scissors, cable needles. Um, these are row counters. 
They're electronic and they can go on your finger. Very cool. Anyway, um, my needle case usually goes in here. But it's here now. Okay, anyway. This video is going to be really long if I keep blathering on. Oh, okay. I went the, I got this wrong. I have to go the other way because the end is attached to this end. So I'm actually just going to switch the stoppers. This method is a lot easier than when you do the, um, when I do the, uh, the cowls that are like uh, longer and thinner because those ones, uh, <laughs> you have to like twist the cowl halfway and to find twist it around and before grafting is like really complicated and annoying. <laughs> this is probably gonna bang against the table if I let it, so I'm just gonna try and keep it under my arm. Okie dokie, whoops, don't fall off. I have exactly the right number. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a three needle bind off here. So, oh my gosh, this is just terrible. I'm not gonna do the entire thing on camera because that would be annoying and tedious. So I'm just gonna do, we go through the first two stitches, through, whoops, off. I don't know if you can even see this. It's not very close up. Uh, go through the second stitch, go through the second stitch. Whoops, this happens all the time. They kind of just fall. Once you get into the rhythm of the three needle bind off, it's not so hard, but okay. If you want to see a three needle bind off tutorial, you can probably find a much better one on YouTube. Um, okay, and then we bind the stitch off. Cool. We've got the next one. Yep, so I said it's just banging around on the table. There's the next one. Went off here. Did it go off here? Okay. And then off. There's the three needles plus like the other needles, two ends of the needle that are here are just kind of obnoxious. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off now. And we're back. So grafting is done. Now I have a finished cowl. Uh, here's the inside. It's not super neat, but again, it's on the inside, so it doesn't really matter. Um, if I were to do things differently, I would have knit a plane around for the first round after the provisional cast on, because then you don't have to deal with like color work um, floats getting in the way. Uh, one thing uh, about floats though, to note here, you don't have to catch any. I mean, actually I did in this, in this there's some of these are like 10 and 12 stitch uh, sections of, um, of the lighter color. I caught those, I caught those ones in the middle just once, um, but anything like eight stitches or fewer, I didn't catch because, um, it, the floats are, are folded inside the cowl, so you don't need to. Uh, let's see. Now I'm going to put it on for you. I'm going to have to... Because the inside is different, this is the one downside of the inside being different. You really have to make sure it's all tucked up in there. There we go. Nice and tall. <laughs> Oops. Really cozy. You can pull this up over your mask. It's a good way to double mask uh, when you're walking around outside. It stays up super nicely because uh, it's nice and tight. It's like because of the funnel shape, it stays up nicely. People will be able to see it. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, am I allowed to say that about my own work? It is. It's really pretty. <laughs> I'm really proud that I did this. And I'm pleased with it. So that's a little bit about how to DIY a fun cowl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pleased. I'm going to wear it. Actually, I'm not going to wear it. It's like 60 degrees today. I don't think I'm going to have to wear this, but um, I'm trying to think. Yep, you're going to, you do need to weave in your ends inside the cowl and then you just weave in the ends of the grafted edge like along the along the ridge that you grafted and then that's pretty much it it's an easy finish um yeah if you have any questions about this feel free to email me uh, barnaby knits at gmail.com or comment on this instagram video or on youtube um or the show notes i'll get emails regardless so hope you liked this hope you're inspired to knit one uh 
If the pattern's not on Ravelry right now, DM me for it. I'll give it to you. And that's all for now. Thank you.